Now, I have always said what I feel needs to be said, regardless of the consequences. And to hear lectures on political courage from people who've put absolutely nothing on the line, it's just, it's a bit much. It just is. Second, this attack on me was driven mostly by DeSantis influencers. Um, Whether they were paid influencers or not, I don't know. But either way, they apparently decided that it was a good political strategy to take one of the more prominent conservatives in media, which is me, uh, who's been a DeSantis supporter for years, and cast him as the enemy. What? What do you guys think this achieves? I'm your enemy now too? Me? I mean, I've dedicated hours of this show over the years, hours, cumulative hours to defending DeSantis against all manner of attacks, including recently. And now I'm on your list of bad guys? What are you trying to accomplish here? What do you think this accomplishes? Is it working? You know, there's another DeSantis supporter account with a a decent following that's been chastising me for weeks, as far as I can tell, for not being pro-DeSantis enough. Yes, you've supported him, but uh, but you need to support him more. We need more. All right, guys. So I just could not help but make this video, okay? I know some of you guys are probably going to get tired of me talking about this specific subject, the Trump meet the press interview that has the left and the right upset. Now, we got to talk about Matt Walsh, okay, who is getting a whole lot of backlash, not from Trump supporters, <laughs> but from DeSantis supporters, whom he supports, because apparently he is not coming out here and attacking Trump fast enough, okay? When Trump made his comments about, um, you know, gender ideology and abortion during the Meet the Press interview, uh, apparently Matt Walsh is expected by DeSantis supporters to attack Trump immediately, right, for uh, caving to the left, okay? This is what they say, right? And um, it's just hilarious, okay? Because politics is a very fascinating thing to behold, Right. And what we were told, okay, is that, hey, we should elect DeSantis, okay? You should vote for DeSantis because Trump's not electable in the general, right? He won't be able to beat Biden, right? Only DeSantis can beat Biden. Except fast forward a few months, polls are showing that it is actually DeSantis that has issues with winning a general election rather than Trump, right? The polls show that if the election was held today, it's likely that Trump would win and that DeSantis would lose to Biden, right? And it's just kind of funny to think about because, you know, a lot of these guys, some of these guys at the Daily Wire, like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh, are overtly DeSantis supporters, right? They support DeSantis, which, hey, I don't have a problem with. I don't care who you support, okay? I told you guys, my top three are Trump, DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, If any of you guys support them, hey, I'm with you, right? I'm with you. I'm not a tribalist, okay? I'm supporting whoever the Republican nominee is because my focus is taking down the Biden administration, right? I want to win, right? I want to win, okay? This country cannot stomach another four years of the Biden administration and Democrats running the show and that's why I'm making this video, okay? Um, so I want you guys to understand, the criticisms of Matt Walsh from DeSantis supporters is that he's not attacking Trump uh, fast enough on the issue of gender ideology and abortion. Now, with the gender ideology issue, Trump in this Meet the Press interview essentially hesitated when asked, can a man become a woman and vice versa, right? Now, ultimately, Trump said, I don't believe so. And Trump has been very clear on his issue. However, he's been criticized, again, for thinking about the answer before actually answering the question, okay, for not immediately saying no, okay? That's how desperate the attacks against Trump have gotten from some of these people, okay? And and Matt Walsh is going to attack Trump over that, claiming that he's caving to the left on the issue of, you know, gender ideology when there's no evidence that Trump is doing that, okay? There's no evidence that Trump is pro-trans or whatever, okay? Um, Just because you don't come out here and just attack, you know, LGBTQ people all the time, that doesn't mean that you are pro-trans, right? So again, this criticism of Trump for not saying no immediately and actually thinking about his answer before answering, I, I think it's silly, right? It's just, it reeks of desperation, okay? And I also think that the attacks against 
Matt Walsh because he's not attacking Trump fast enough on the issue also is silly. I think both of those things are silly, okay? I think Matt Walsh has been one of the number one fighters in the movement, especially when it comes to, again, the issue of gender ideology. And at the end of the day, he's taking more risks than anybody, right? So I have mad respect for the guy when it comes to that issue. And on that issue, the polls agree with us. Right. We have the American people's support to come out here and say, hey, we want to ban men from participating against women in sports. OK, we need to have a serious conversation about allowing children to transition and a host of other issues when it comes to that specific issue. Right. I think it's totally fine for conservatives to double and triple down on this issue right now politically. OK, it would make sense. However, when it comes to this other issue of abortion, which Matt Walsh is criticizing Trump for refusing to essentially take a position on a federal ban, right? And that is an issue, okay? And the reason why that's an issue is because Trump is going to face a whole lot of pressure from people who don't think he's being pro-life, Christian, or conservative enough on this issue. And they're going to try to pressure him to take a position on the federal ban, which could effectively just destroy his chances of winning the general election. Again, it is ridiculous to suggest that Trump is not pro-life enough when he has been the most pro-life president that we've had in a long, long, long time. OK, three Supreme Court justices that are pro-life overturning Roe v. Wade. He has a great record um, running as a pro-life president and being a pro-life president, the criticisms of him because he wants to win a general election are ridiculous and short-sighted because I can make the argument <laughs> that the real pro-life position is to actually win a general election so that we maintain our ability to control what our states do on the issue and save lives at the local level because pushing it at the federal level realistically it's just not going to happen right it's not just up to the president you also have to have the uh house and the senate get on board and the chance of that happening while openly running on a federal abortion ban are basically slim to none and you have a better chance of having the reverse happen which is that roe v wade gets enshrined into law okay which will eliminate our ability to uh decide on this issue at the state level which would be anti-pro-life in my opinion okay i'm just saying i can make the argument the other way around okay and again that's why i'm so passionate about this because i am pro-life and i want to see less abortions in this country but i'm also realistic in my expectations and that's why i want to respond to matt walsh who i think has a very elementary understanding of politics around this issue although i do agree with him morally on it his understanding politically is just it leaves a lot to be desired so without further ado let's get into it um so that leaves the question, you know, even if I don't like it, like the, the, the moderating of tone, moving to the left, moving to the middle, uh, even if it makes my, my blood boil to hear a politician go squishy on abortion and go squishy on basic biology, is it a clever strategy politically? Okay. Is it more likely to get him elected? Can we make a kind of Machiavellian end justify the means sort of argument here? Would that argument be accurate at least? Will these tactics win the general election? My answer is emphatically no, absolutely not. They will not win you the general. This is not a good strategy. And to Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, he's just wrong, right? He's a 100% wrong, and I'm going to tell you why he's wrong. The reason why he's wrong is because he apparently didn't pay attention to what happened in the midterms. And again, his understanding of politics in the political landscape, in the political environment, again, although I think he has a great understanding of cultural issues, actual politics he, he his understanding is not nearly as, as good and i'm gonna show you guys why to illustrate my point okay I, I i need only ask you one question okay one question i want you to consider this have you in your life ever met a voter who says that they would vote for trump if only he was slightly more liberal on abortion have you ever had that conversation from someone who says, I love everything about Trump, or at least I like everything about Trump, except the abortion stuff. I, I think he's too conservative. But we, we put that aside and I'd vote for him. I've talked to countless people about politics all across the country. I have never heard that opinion from anyone. Yeah. So this is why I say that, again, Matt Walsh just, he doesn't understand the actual political landscape here. Because nobody 
is arguing that Trump is going to win over people by becoming more liberal on abortion, right? No, nobody has ever made that argument. That's not the argument being made. The argument being made is that Trump is going to avoid having people come out and vote against him who otherwise would not vote or would not have the motivation to vote had Trump just not pushed a federal ban. Now, if you push the federal ban, what happens is that you motivate the young single women of America, okay, the thoughts, the 304s, okay, the garden tools of America, they come out and vote in droves in the midterms. They voted 70% for Democrats, okay? They voted overwhelmingly for Democrats and they voted more because, because of this issue of abortion, okay? That's the problem. People understand, why did the GOP lose the midterms? The GOP lost the midterms because of the backlash from overturning Roe v. Wade. And now all of a sudden they realize that, oh, abortion can be banned in my state. Now I'm going to come out and vote in order to make sure that abortion is not banned, okay? Or not completely banned. That's the reality. That's what happened. That's why Trump is not taking a position on it. Okay. There's no doubt in my mind. Trump is pro-life. If he could have it his way, he would do a federal ban. But the reality of the midterms shows that this issue in a world post Roe v. Wade being overturned. Okay. Post Dobbs shows that, Hey, people are motivated, particularly young single women are very motivated to vote on this issue they don't care about the economy they don't care about crime they don't care about they don't care about nothing but this right preserving their so-called right to abortion and these women are radicalized okay and that's something that we have to tactically understand as conservatives if we want to protect the progress that we've made on being pro-life okay again there's a lot of nuances behind it but for whatever reason, it seems like Matt Walsh doesn't, he doesn't really understand the political landscape. And I'm going to prove to you guys he really doesn't understand it uh, going forward. Ever. Okay. Um, I, I have never met the person who is a leftist on abortion, but who is willing to vote for Donald Trump if only he moderates on that issue. Again, so it's not about gaining voters. It's about not motivating people to vote against you. But there are people who are on the fence, right? Who do not want to vote for Biden. They're like, I don't want to vote for Biden. Biden's economy is terrible. And that is especially true this time around. This is why I'm super passionate about this because I really want to win, right? This time around, there are a lot of people that are like, I don't want to vote for Biden. I want the economy to be better. Be better. I want the border to be closed. I want to clean up crime. I don't want to keep sending money to Ukraine. But, but they want to keep the right to abortion. And that is the only thing that is keeping them from voting for somebody like Trump, not because they like Trump, but simply because voting for Trump is a vote against Biden. They're not actually voting for Trump. They're voting against Biden. OK, voters have plenty of reasons to vote against Biden. Trump does not need to give voters more reasons to vote against him or any GOP nominee, to be quite honest with you. And again, that's part of the reason why DeSantis is not doing well in the general Versus Biden as Trump because voters have more reasons to vote against DeSantis than they do with Trump from a policy perspective. Trump understands this. He's being politically savvy about it. And he, he also, again, is, is actually saving the pro-life progress that we made on this issue. I have to keep reiterating that because people want to say that you're not pro-life enough because you don't think that Trump should issue a federal ban when I'm actually looking at the long term. I'm playing the long game. Because political change does not happen overnight. It is a long game. And the worst thing you could do is to lose your progress by trying to federalize an issue before you have the support to do it. Okay? Even if I support it morally, I think it should be done now. Doesn't matter what I think. Doesn't matter what I want. What matters is what you can do. What you can actually do now. Where is that person? This will most likely be a woman, right? We're told that this is what you need to do for suburban women, especially because they care so much about abortion and having so-called abortion rights. And so I'm just trying to imagine the suburban woman who supports everything about Trump except the abortion stuff. Again, it's not about supporting everything about Trump. It's about voting against Biden. Trump's best case scenario is that those people 
either sit out, they don't vote for Biden, or they vote for him. Either one of those things are good for him, right? The less Democrats participating, the better for Republicans, right? If Democrats don't have a reason to vote, it's hard to go out and vote for a bad economy, okay? Everybody knows we have a bad economy. It's hard to vote for a guy that's basically incapacitated mentally. But, but if you put an issue on the ballot that motivates them to go out and vote for Biden, then they will do it. Again, the point is to prevent people from being motivated to vote against you. Again, Matt Walsh, he doesn't, he, he doesn't grasp that concept. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand it. Well, I'll tell you where that person exists. Nowhere. They don't exist. Okay? Uh, if you think that there is somewhere out there a significant number of voters who are still gettable for Donald Trump, still willing to vote for him, if only he becomes more openly socially liberal, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you're simply delusional. And, and by the way, this is not some kind of new and innovative approach for, for Trump. The Republican establishment has been preaching this gospel for decades. This is nothing new. For years and years, they've said that, that Republicans need to moderate on abortion, need to moderate on the so-called social issues to win national elections. So Trump is simply following conventional Republican wisdom with this approach. And, uh, and, and Trump is best when he rejects the conventional Republican uh, establishment wisdom. Here he's embracing it. Because how has that wisdom worked out? Well, well, there's a trail of humiliations and defeats stretching back decades to show for it. McCain was moderate on abortion. Romney was moderate on abortion. What about Trump in 2016? Well, whatever he personally believed or believes now, he was not perceived in 2016 at all as a moderate on this issue or really any issue in 20. Okay, so again, this is why I, I say that Matt Walsh's understanding of actual politics is just... It seems very elementary. One, he's trying to compare the positions of Republicans in a world where Roe v. Wade was still in effect versus a world where Roe v. Wade is not in effect, right? So whatever position a Republican takes on abortion in a world where effectively you can't really ban it, there's no real threat of banning it, okay? That is not going to motivate as many people to vote, right? So it's not, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's not that big of an issue, OK, because effectively, there's not much that Republicans can really do. But in a world now where you are allowed to outright ban it. OK, um, now that motivates people to actually go to the polls and vote. So to compare Trump's position or any Republican's position before Roe v. Wade was overturned to now and try to use that as some type of proof and evidence that. It doesn't matter what his position is on this, whether he's a hardliner or a moderate. He's it, it doesn't make a difference. That it, it's it's ridiculous because again, it just shows you don't you don't understand that we're in 2023. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. We're in a different political landscape. There are a different set of consequences when we're talking about voting on this issue, right? Matt Walsh doesn't he doesn't for what I don't understand how he doesn't get this. I don't understand how he doesn't understand this. This is basic stuff. It's very basic. 2016. He was perceived as a hardliner. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. Trump was a hardliner on things like immigration. Now, Matt Walsh also claimed that what well, Trump is best when he's bucking traditional uh, Republican positions. Well, that is what he did in, in 2016. You're right. Uh, he's He bucked uh, the GOP on uh, infrastructure. He bucked the GOP on trade. He bucked the GOP on foreign policy. And that's why he won. Right. That's why he won. But now all of a sudden on this issue right here, when he is bucking the traditional position, which again, that's a whole, it's a whole different thing now It's changed because Roe v. Wade has been overturned. So we don't even have any real precedence for this type of stuff to have a real conversation about it outside of what happened in 2022. Now all of a sudden, oh, well, he's not doing the right thing, right? This bucking of the Republican establishment though is, uh, this is wrong, right? But you just admitted in 2016 it was good for him to do that. But now all of a sudden it's not. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly where the logic is here. Okay, again, what Trump was doing when he bucked a Republican position in 2016 was he actually was becoming more moderate. 
he was actually becoming more moderate on the issue, which is why he won, right? That's why he won is because he wasn't a hardliner on everything. Nobody ever wins that is a hardliner on every single issue. There are some issues you're allowed to be hardline on based off the current state of the country. The GOP right now can be hardline on gender ideology. They can be hardline on a school choice. They can be hardline on crime. We can be hardline on immigration. Yeah, let's be hardline on those issues because we have the support behind it. But on some issues, we don't have the support to be hard line and saying that you have to be in a general election is a easy way to lose, right? It is the surefire way to lose. Again, I, I just, <laughs> I, I'm just, my mind is blown right now. It really is. And, and, and he did indeed take hard line stances on a number of controversial, controversial issues. I mean, uh, famously, he even talked publicly, he was asked about it, but he talked publicly about about uh, about prison sentences for women who get abortions now yeah now that it, it, again in a world where roe v wade is still in effect it doesn't matter right that's not happening everybody knows that's not happening so it doesn't matter what he says again he, <laughs> incredible after the fact he after that he, he, he kind of moderated that stance later that day after the backlash but you know, he talked about that. And it, did it kill his campaign? Obviously not. Yeah, again, because Roe v. Wade was still in effect. That's why it didn't kill his campaign. Okay, because everybody knows that's realistically not something that's going to happen. Everybody knows. So what does that tell us? It tells us that, and, and by the way, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with abortion, but build the wall, lock her up, all this kind of stuff. 2016, these were not moderate. Okay, this, this all, when you've got people chanting, lock her up in the, you know, in the stands at your rallies, nobody's watching that and thinking, well, this is a moderate figure. This is a, this is more of a moderate centrist figure. No one's thinking that. And, and that's not who he was in 2016 and he won. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the only way to beat the Democrats is to present a clear alternative which means not adjusting your own positions to bring them closer to the Democrat position. It means doing, if anything, the opposite. Yeah, so again, this is Matt Walsh's argument, right? In order to beat Democrats and respond to the left being too extreme, on the right, we need to get more extreme, right? We need to get more extreme in response to the left. Instead of meeting the country halfway on issues where it makes sense to meet them halfway, where we don't necessarily have the support of the country for hardline stances. Nah, don't do that. No, you got to get more extreme. And this is exactly how you lose, right? This is how you guarantee that you lose. You don't get more extreme in response to extremism where it doesn't make sense. Okay? On issues where you don't have the support, you say, you know what? We're going to meet you in the middle. Okay? And on this issue, again, of abortion, we have the ability at the state level. If people are so passionate about this, right? then ban it at your state level. If you have to support in your state, then ban it in your state. And then once we can put together a string of wins showing that, hey, the people are on board with this, particularly in, in swing states, banning abortion, okay, then, hey, maybe we can push that federal ban. But up until this point, we have not proven that's the case. I mean, even in conservative states, red states like, uh, Ohio recently that happened this year, huge voter turnout rejected a Republican measure that would have made it tougher to uh, amend the Constitution in a way that would have made it harder to protect abortion rights, right? In Kansas, voters voted against an amendment to the Constitution saying that there's no right to abortion. In Montana, the Republican-backed measures uh, that were considered to be more pro-life or to allow them to impose more restrictions on abortions, it was defeated there as well, too. So we haven't even proven in red states with our new power that we can even get it done at the state level. So if we can't get it done at the state level, what makes you think it's a good idea politically to push it at the federal level? I'm just saying, again, I'm following the numbers. I'm following the politics here. 
The numbers are saying that the people who are so gun ho about, hey, we need to ban it, right? They ain't showing out when it comes time to actually ban it. At least not more than the thoughts, right? When it comes to trying to protect it. And see, that's the problem, right? That's the problem. If you can convince me that pro-lifers are going to come out here and vote in droves like the thoughts of America voting in droves when it comes to this issue, okay, I'm on board with you. Let's do it. Let's push the federal ban. But we have not proven that we have the numbers or even the support among our own people in our own state to, to do it. So let's get some victories in our own states, right, that show that, okay, there's an appetite for this before taking it to the next level. Again, this is politics. And the crazy part is, is that even DeSantis understands this because he literally waited until after the midterms, after he had won the election to decide to sign a six week abortion ban in the middle of the night and try to make sure nobody knew about it. Why is that? Because if he, he knows that if he would have did it before the midterm election, he know that would have gave people a lot of reasons to come out and vote against him. He knows how much backlash he would have got. He knows that, hey, this issue is, is, is a hot button issue. I could lose because of this issue. And even, even when his job was safe, he didn't stand proud on it. He didn't proudly stand for it. He signed it in the middle of the night to make sure that it doesn't get any press coverage. <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know. But again, if you listen to people like Matt Walsh, you would think that the whole country's ready for this. But it's like, what you're going to do if you force the GOP candidate to take this position of a federal ban, you're going to basically make sure that there's more abortions in this country. You're going to make sure because it's going to be a giant blue wave that's going to wipe out the Democrats at the House, that's going to wipe out Republicans in the, in the House, the Senate, and the White House, and then Roe v. Wade will be enshrined in law. And then guess what? All the progress we made on this, over. You won't have the option in your state to ban it. You won't have the option. You ain't, you're not even going to have the option. Listen to these people. You're not going to have the option. I'm a practical person. Take the W. Let's get it done at the state. Let's prove that we can actually ban it in our own states first without, you know, losing. Okay. Let's prove that we can do that first. And then once we can do that, okay, maybe we can take it to the next level. Let's get more incremental progress on this. But jumping all the way to a federal ban after basically saying it's a state issue it, 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 it's politically unfeasible. It's political suicide. That's what it is. And that's what really bothers me about these people is like, you're advocating for political suicide. That's what you're advocating for. We cannot come out here and, and to push something like this, knowing that the backlash is going to cost the whole party. And that's going to make sure that we lose all the progress. If we win, we may not necessarily get the federal ban. Okay, but we don't lose anything. We still have the ability to handle it the way we want to handle it in our states where we have to support. And then you build on that. The contrast. And when it comes to abortion, that means clearly and concisely and powerfully and persuasively making the case for life, the defense of life. Which Ron DeSantis didn't do. He didn't do. That's why, again, he signed it in the middle of the night. He waited till after the midterms because he know that it's going to be hard for me to make that case. With a six-week ban. He knows that. I'm not saying it's easy. Like, no matter what you do on abortion, there are going to be people, lots of people who are upset. No matter what position you take. Okay, Trump says that I come up with a compromise that makes everyone happy. That's impossible. That doesn't exist. That's not a plan. Just saying, oh, you know what I'll do? You know what I'll do? I'll just come up with an idea that everyone will like. It doesn't exist. You cannot do it. Well, and look, it's not about that. I, I agree with him, but it's about not pissing people off. That's what it comes down to. Not to the point where, again, they will vote against you and you don't have the numbers to counterbalance it. We have not proven that we have the numbers to counter the thought vote, right? If we can come out here and have the numbers to counter the thought vote, again, I'm on board with you. Let's do it. But we ain't got the numbers. On this issue, it's not there. It doesn't matter if you, uh, you could be the most brilliant deal maker in history. The fact is that among, on the left, what they want is abortion up until birth, period. For any reason, period. That's what they want. They will not be happy with anything but that. Yeah, those are Democrat politicians. But the actual people, 
That's not what they want. The people do not want abortion up until birth for any reason. And I think it is important to focus on the extremism of the Democrat Party, but but also at the same time, you, you got to understand from a political perspective, it would make sense for, for Trump to distance himself from what can be seen as a policy position that will motivate people to vote against him when we've already accumulated a major significant win on the issue. And we're trying to maintain the progress that we have on the issue and to make incremental progress moving forward into the future. Again, this is political strategy. This is tactics. This is chess, not checkers. And if you if you come up with any plan other than that, you are going to be a uh, this is a handmaid's tale. You're a patriarchal, oppressive uh, dictator. You know, you're killing women, back alley abortions, anything but that. That's how they're going to paint you. That's just the reality. And so you might as well take the correct, true position. You can upset those people anyway. They're going to be upset anyway. So take the true position and defend it. Like, imagine that. Imagine actually just explaining. Like, like explaining. Yes, of course, I, 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 I think that we should ban. I think we should have banned abortions entirely. And the media is going to go, oh, why would you say that? Just explain it. Just explain. Well, the reason is that is that these are human beings. I don't think we should. It's ever okay to directly and intentionally kill innocent human human life. I just that's what I believe, and I believe that too, right? I, I believe that too. You're right on it morally, but politically speaking, we don't have the support to get there, right? And trying to force this down people's throat, even though we don't have the political. Uh, support to get there yet is going to basically make sure that there's more abortions in this country. You're going to make sure that we never get there, right? By taking too much at one time. Again, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. I don't think Matt Walsh really understands the political landscape. Again, he didn't mention the midterms at all. The fact that he didn't mention midterms tells you everything you need to know about his knowledge on the politics of this subject. Again, it's, it's fascinating because Again, you know, Trump is getting backlash for doing something that all politicians do, and it has worked, and they do it because it works, is that, okay, in the general election, you got to be moderate on some issues. There's some issues where you got to give some ground on in order to actually win, and Trump is not doing the wrong thing here. He's just being practical about it, and I don't think he deserves a lot of his backlash. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.